Hi, my name's Sean Townsend. This is meant to be an introductory talk to equine biomechanics. I had to do a few of these introductory talks recently, and I thought it'd be fun to put some of the more general slides up for you guys on the web. No maths, I promise, no maths. So biomechanics means a lot of different things to a lot of people, but basically mechanics is the study of forces. So biomechanics is when forces are happening to living structures and equine biomechanics is when we're applying those forces to horses. You can skip the word bio if you want and just call it equine mechanics. Basically we're talking about the physics of the horse. Our most fashionable act is definitely the study of gait. When people that have horses have heard of biomechanics it's generally the stuff we do looking at horses motion and in particular working out what's going on internally to cause that motion. Biomechanics itself covers a range of topics and techniques. It's not just about musculoskeletal locomotion. If anything is causing a force, if you look at the way that the blood flows around the horse, that is a type of biomechanics, cardiovascular biomechanics. If you look at the way that the cells interact with each other or the microorganisms within the cells that would be cellular biomechanics. My personal area is musculoskeletal biomechanics and it is the one that comes up most often but it's worth knowing that it's not the full extent. Even within musculoskeletal biomechanics though there's quite a range of different people working on a range of different questions and it's a mistake to think that it's all about gait. So here's another way of looking at what's going on. You've got forces acting, there are the external forces such as when the ground interacts with the horse's hoof. You've got internal forces like the action of the muscles on the bones. And these all combine to result in movements of segments, deformation of biological material, muscles bulge, tendons stretch, and Biological changes in tissues such as growth, injury, increasing strength, micro damage, and in turn, all these changes and movements feed back and change the forces that result. So we have a loop here, and studying that loop is really what biomechanics is all about. So, what does a biomechanist actually do? Uh, the main thing we're associated with is measurement. That is the big one for us. Uh, we use uh, within that modeling in order to describe what we're measuring and interpret it. We do a lot of validation of new techniques and so on. But at the end of the day, measuring things is what biomechanics is mostly uh, associated with. And that can be movement, that can be force and so on. Uh, to a lesser extent, uh, a biomechanist would get involved in prediction and simulation. If you performed an intervention, you might want to know before you did it what was likely to happen. And those two things combine to give us our monitoring and evaluation role. If you perform a treatment or an intervention, uh, like a veterinary treatment or physiotherapy, a uh, biomechanist can come in and monitor that, see the progress either in a clinical trial setting or in a, a real world application setting. We look at performance and its limitations. We look at the effect of change on the horse, uh, trying to understand or diagnose injuries, look at the effect of aging, training, confirmation and so on. Basically, we quantify stuff and we make assessments objective. A lot of the biomechanists that study horses aren't actually personally interested in equestrian sports at all. Um, I do ride myself, but an awful lot of the academics out there study horses simply because they're biologically very exciting creatures. Uh, horses are very highly adapted for efficient terrestrial locomotion. They're ungulates, which means that they're running on their toenails. That gives them these fantastic meter-long tendons for incredibly efficient storage and release of elastic energy. It means that the distal end of their limb near their hooves are light in order to be able to move faster. They have 
a very impressive stride length because their scapula has no bony attachment to their spine. Their scapula is free to slide up and down their thorax, giving them the stride length that they're known for. They don't have the ability to flex their spine like a cheetah and increase their stride length that way. But having that rigid spine is what makes them unusually able to carry a rider. And all of these adaptions, of course, are great news for us as riders, but also makes the horse very vulnerable to injury. The horse operates with incredibly low safety factor, as you'll probably know if you've ever tried to keep one sound for a season. My own research focuses on musculoskeletal modeling, and much as I've looked at the horses, I've also looked at humans. Sadly, the world of equine biomechanics is still a good 10-15 years behind human biomechanics, so if you want to really study the cutting edge and pick up the newest techniques, a lot of people tend to keep one hand in the human world, the medical world, the visual effects world, in order to really see the best of both sides. These days I work mostly in forensics and visual effects, in fact these days I work mostly in forensics, but the visual effects gives better pictures. Many people, such as Hilary Clayton, who until recently ran the McPhail Centre, focus entirely on the academic side of equine biomechanics. I've pinched the example of Hilary's setup because it's a very typical biomechanic setup. We use optoelectronic cameras set around the outside, recording the positions of markers attached to the horses. And in the floor, you can just about see hidden force plates recording the hoof strikes that the horse makes on the floor. The force plates are matted, they are hidden, they're not meant to be detectable by the horse. In practice, the horse tends to stand on a force plate once and then they realize that that's not a happy place, that feels slightly different to the rest of the floor and you can be going up and down, up and down, trying to get the horse to hit it again. Other centres, such as the ENVA in Paris, have avoided the whole problem of floor-mounted force plates altogether by trying to come up with uh, force shoes and ways of measuring force that can be moved with the horse so that you can record the forces acting on every single uh, stride. Unfortunately at the moment that does tend to leave horses in high heels and with slightly heavy shoes on but this is very much a technology that's still under development. The recent jumping trials have only recorded kinematics but they've had a similar approach of being able to take the cameras or take the recording kit out into the field and come up with a much more portable solution. The idea of a portable solution has been taken even further by the Royal Veterinary College in London who, like the ENVA, are using inertial measurement units and recording every stride that the horse takes out in any condition. This is one of my own setups. Uh, you can actually see me in the top right there. Uh, at the time, this was a groundbreakingly large setup to record horses galloping to halt, halt to gallop, rearing, and so on. And it gives you an idea of the sort of limitations that the optoelectronic setups can have. Um, even though this was meant to be a groundbreaking large setup, we're still quite limited in terms of the actual capture volume where we can see what the horse is doing. We need to maintain line of sight to the horse at all times. And we've had to glue little markers to the horse. And whilst that reduces the amount of data that the cameras need to capture, it means that we don't really get a full picture. We stick the marker to the skin on the outside of the horse, and we pretend that it's following roughly where the bones are. And of course, it has a lot of skin movement, a lot of errors, a lot of wobble an awful lot of mathematical modeling goes into trying to take that back out again. The technique of motion capture was developed when recording video was actually a major technological challenge. It was just too much information for the computers to be able to process fast. 
and recording more than six markers was quite limiting because again the amount of data got too much. These days we can attach pretty much as many markers as we like but we're starting to look and see if there are better ways of doing things. One of the areas that I'm particularly keen on is going back to marker-free analysis now that we can actually cope with the sheer volume of data that comes with a video. Uh, this means filming without actually attaching any markers or any sensors to the horse at all, so you can imagine that has a great advantage to get a more natural movement and in order to be able to record in a competition setting. It means that you can go up to pretty high speeds these days, and particularly if you compare that to your own ability to watch a horse, which is really only about 25 um, hertz, 25 shots per second, it means that we can actually slow things down, really see what's going on. We can record in high definition. And there are several programs around these days, including my own, that can track the segments of the horse automatically and actually minimize errors in a fairly efficient way. In order to take the step from just recording gait and looking at stride lengths and so on to full-blown biomechanics, uh, the most typical approach is to use a musculoskeletal model. Um, this is my own one here. And that allows us to go from looking at the external movement to looking at what's going on internally in the horse. What are the tendon strains? What are the internal joint forces? What are the turning moments or torques at the joints and so on. Okay, so I think I'm going to actually leave it there for this particular section. In future, if this format works out for us, I'll do some more applied stuff and uh, also discussions of current research and papers and so on. We academics do kind of love to talk, but I'm much more used to a captive audience. So uh, I'm just going to give this one a little bit of time and see if this format works out. Feel free to give me a shout, tell me what works and uh, what doesn't work, come up with any questions, uh, have a bit of a sweepstake on where exactly I'm from. Um, pretty much any feedback is welcome and uh, all being well, I'll get some more stuff out fairly shortly.